G'day Jabronis, this is Averd back with you again. Welcome here to our week 4 team builder. For the PPL, your Tampa Bay Frog Leaders are up against the Duke Blue Dwebbles, coached by Six of the Token Minorities. Uh, Six is a very good friend of mine. Uh, he's relatively new still to draft format, I want to say. Like, he's very good at it, um, but he's still relatively new. And he's been hyped for this game, so have I. Um, I currently have a pretty even record against Token Minority members. Uh, lost to Maddie. I've beaten Uzi, I narrowly lost to Jolt when I played him, um, and I beat Danza. So, against most of the members of the Token Minorities, I've done pretty well, uh, and I'm hoping to, you know, keep that going in the future. But this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Uh, Six has a very scary team. He is currently undefeated heading into this game. Um, this game, for uh, whatever reason, due to scheduling and whatnot, is actually happening before my Week 3 game. So I actually don't know the result yet of my game against Bill. My team's ready, and you'll see the team builder for that before you probably see the team builder for this, but um, the battle itself hasn't actually happened yet. So yeah, this is just um, an interesting thing. This is probably why you're like, why the hell is there a bikini? So to kind of get this out of the way, and you will see it from the um, stuff on the screen, uh, I did make some transactions. I ended up dropping uh, Roserade, uh, Roserade, Licky Licky, Monferno, and Grumpig, which allowed me to immediately bring in Victini plus Vile Plume, and then gives me a spare point to bring in a Mon next week. So when I have my week five game against, I believe it's Pauly Mac, I'll have one more Mon that I can add into my team, which I'm pretty hyped about. That should be um, really good. But yeah, uh, adding those Mons is wicked here. Significantly helps this matchup in my opinion, but I'm going to break down the sets, and you're going to see that um, I've brought some interesting shit. So first and foremost, this Victini. You're probably looking at it, right? And you're thinking, what the hell has he cooked up here? What is this absolute garbage? And, you know what, I'd say you aren't wrong, but <laughs> in practice this set is just stupid. So, the whole premise of this Victini set is more or less the fact that it kind of beats anything he wants to lead with. There's only, like one scenario where it doesn't but in the psychology of the game I feel like he can't afford to risk so I, I think if I leave Victini it screams choice scarf um, even against Granin even if he's a specs Gran he's gonna need like at least like five hits with water shuriken to knock out a Victini and he knows that if I'm scarfed I probably have um, some bulk because I don't need all the speed um, on the team. He said, well, I mean, technically if I wanted to, you know, match Scarf Zapdos, technically I could run Max V, but I think he knows I'm going to run some bulk, so he knows that in his best interest, he shouldn't probably leave a Greninja in against the Victini. Like, that's never really, like, I mean, normally, yes, if you think about speed, but early doors, I think Stick should be smart and scout to see if I'm a Scarf Victini, because he has no reason, because of how good Greninja's matchup is here, I just don't see any reason for him to risk that. Now the thing is, I actually do, depending on what I see on the teams, I do have a uh, secondary lead in mind that I will talk about. So there's two Mons that could both be fantastic leads in this matchup. Um, it just depends on which one I feel is better as a lead. Victini is all about where this set can be really good if I feel like I can pressure the Stealth Rockers on his team. Uh, that's the massive thing here. If I can pressure the Mons that go for Stealth Rock, then I can take advantage of this matchup immensely. So, in that sense, Victini is generally expected to be the lead because unless he leads with Swampert or Garchomp, I mean, he could leave without, even if he leads with them, I'm still in a good spot. Realistically, the only Greninja thing that worries me is if for some reason he stays in, but even if he Dark Pulses, I can live because of my Focus Sash. It would just suck if he got the flinch. Uh, the other thing is if he clicks U-turn and goes right out to Garchomp because then obviously he can just click EQ. And then there's no more Victini on the field, so that though would rely on Styx risking the fact that I'm not Scarfed. Or feeling that even if I was a Scarf Victini, that if I clicked Bolt Strike and killed, then he could just go into his Garchomp and potentially, you know, set up and win. So I just think judging on, as you can see in the matchup here, how good Greninja's matchup is, I feel that turn one play he has no reason to risk. Literally zero reasons to make a risky decision there, I think. So my play turn one against Greninja is Bolt Strike. Against anything else, 
here's how it goes down. So, another matchup that's not super ideal, psych, it actually kind of is, is Alola Muck. You might be thinking, Verd, how does this Victini set beat Alola Muck? Well, it's pretty simple, because I have a Focus Sash, unless he gets the Poison Touch Poison, or he has Shadow Sneak, my play is to Bolt Strike turn 1. Now, the reason I want him to do Bolt Strike is because a Lonely Nature Bolt Strike to an Alola Muck that has max HP will do 48% maximum. Now, this is important because that means that I won't pop his Berry. And because I won't pop his Berry, it means that I can follow up even after he goes for a Curse with a V-Create, and I will knock out the Alola Muck. Now, this is good for two reasons. One, it means I've knocked out Alola Muck without my Sash, like, being damaged at all. And two, it really opens the door for Diancy. So Diancy only has two really annoying things it has to deal with in Metagross and Alola Muck. They are the two, um, 100%. So Victini can deal with one of them right off the bat. You might be thinking, oh, well, Lola Muck's not that big of a deal. Trust me, Spadef Muck is annoying. <laughs> um, but Tini can also pressure the Metagross as well. It might seem a bit odd for me to run no speed, but in this matchup, I just don't need it. Because I'm running a lead Victini, a lot of the things that I lead against, I either naturally will outspeed fine, or they just outspeed me, regardless. So I have no reason to run any speed here. I want to maximize my offensive potential. So, the reason also the speed is important though is because after a V-Create, I can still outspeed things like Swampert, and Alola Muck, and things like that. So, the basic play as well is if he leads Swampert or Garchomp. Uh, against Garchomp, I can obviously just click Glaciate and then uh, probably outspeed the Chomp on the next turn. Um, I actually haven't calced that, but I can surely assume that a Garchomp at level 50, um, yeah, 169 speed. So, Victini will be able to outspeed a Garchomp. Unless he's obviously Scarf Chomp locked into EQ. Um, but, like, I can play, like, even if he is Scarf Chomp locked into EQ, that allows my Thunder in for free. That allows my Zygarde a free Dragon Dance if I want it to. So, it opens a lot of options. But my basic thing is if he leads what I feel like he will in Swampert and um, Garchomp, he will be inclined to want to go for his Rocks because he knows that they wear down. The Thunderous, they'll wear down the Victini if it swaps to punish it. It'll wear down the Selly, which is massive for him. So I feel like when he sees the opportunity to rocks, he won't um, he won't resist the temptation. And that's what this Victini is designed to punish. Um, I really wanted to run Taunt to shut down the Pert, but I felt actually going for E-Ball is better because I feel like Rindo Pert is super obvious here. I have a Thundee, I have a Diancie, I have a Vile Plume, I have a Celesteel that I can run Seed Bomb, I have a Victini. It just makes so much sense for him to run a Rindo Berry here. Um, and so because of that, I feel... He could actually just run lefties because of the fact that, uh, realistically, um, Swampert is his best Sneasel check. So there is a chance he just runs regular lefties, but I'm hedging my bets on there's probably a Rindo Berry in play. And because of that, Energy Ball turn 1 is just so good against the Pert for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, it means that the Pert is no longer checking my Victini at any point in this game. Unless I've gone for two V creates and my sash is broken, but I could just swap out. Um, he can get his rocks up, but then he's sacrificing one of his better defensive checks to a lot of my threats like Zygarde and Diancie. Is basically neutered at that point. Uh, so that's super, super good turn one. Um, and then also like the follow-up play is that he doesn't really have much he can do. Like I'm going to two-shot the Swampert if he goes for rocks. And then my Victini still has a sash intact. So like I said, if the Alola Muck comes in, I can actually essentially 1v1 that thing too, still have my sash intact if it goes for a curse for some reason, and then be like, okay, what, what's next? What's what's the next play then? Um, another really important note, if my Bolt Strike does enough to activate Muck's Berry, it means that my V-Create can most likely Oko it. So that's something really important to remember, because you got to remember V-Create is base 270, whereas Bolt Strike is base 120, no, 130. So like... I'm doing double the damage with V-Create. So that's why it's like a really important thing to look into there. But um, anyway, uh, the Glaciate, like I said, is for the Garchomp. I feel like he is more than likely either going to go for like a sub play. If I see sub and then I go for Glaciate, it's really good because then he's automatically in Glaciate range again um, in that situation. And I feel like he won't sub. If he knows I'm leading Victini, he's going to assume I'm only going to go for Glaciate or swap out. So if he's Yachi, he just stays in and gets up his rocks, but then I'm able to weaken him down to the point where he can't stay in, and that's awesome. Also, potentially Glaciate puts him in range of V-Create, so I don't have to rely on clicking Glaciate. I can just click V-Create instead and fuck something up, and get off huge damage, because V-Create into Energy Ball, 
um, has a chance to knock out Pert, uh, depending on its set. Uh, it just does a huge amount of damage to anything on his team, so that's great. Um, but yeah, like, uh, Victini's kind of woke here, not gonna lie. Um, just puts in so much work, lead-wise. Uh, like I said, the only real downer is Greninja lead, but even then I can play around it. So the reason why Greninja lead is a bit tricky is, like I said, with those series of players, also the fact that if he leads Pert, it can be annoying because rocks go up, so that's why I do have the secondary lead option of this Thunderous. Um, really depends on if I feel it's necessary for me to lead Thunderous over Victini, where it, it's only really if I don't see Garchomp is when I would lead with Thunderous, because then if he led with Greninja or with Swampert, I have a better matchup against them with Thunderous than I do with Victini um, against any variant. Um, Whereas, if Garchomp is there, it is 10 times better to leave with Victini because Thundee can't taunt uh, fast enough to stop a, um... Can't taunt fast enough to stop a, what do you call it? Uh... Garchomp. Now, I'm running, I'm doing something a bit cheeky with my Thunderous. I think it's worth the risk. In my mind, I don't see Styx running a max speed Zapdos. I see him running enough speed to creep Zygarde. And then trying to invest as much bulk as possible against the threats on my team like Victini, even Thundee itself. So I'm capitalizing on that and creeping a um, Zapdos that is creeping Zygarde. That's just the thing. But realistically, Thunderous only becomes the better lead if my opponent does not bring Garchomp. If Garchomp's there, Victini's leading. But uh, Tony Storm is really handy this matchup. Taunt is just immediately so damn good. Shuts down um, Zapdos from doing a lot of stuff if I need it to, like Toxicking. It can be just really annoying. Um, but also the big thing, I guess, is that it shuts down Pert going for rocks. And then on my next turn, well, the thing is, right, so he's going to assume that I have Grass Knot on my Thundee, but he's going to stay in with Pert because he knows that like he has the Rindo, most likely. And can take the Grass Knot here and can guarantee his rocks up. And for him, that's going to be gold in this matchup if he can do that against Thundee. So by taunting him on that turn, I feel like I can get away with clicking Volt Switch on the next turn. It's a risk, obviously, because if he stays in and attacks, then I lose HP for no reason. But I also feel like, because the Grass Knot is so obvious, his backup play after that is going into Zapdos. And if I can Volt Switch with Thundee into something like my Mega Diancie for free against Zapdos with rocks already up, that puts a lot of pressure on his team. It means that his Metagross, which is his best check to come in against it, is going to have to take rocks upon entry, and that's huge. And uh, It just puts me in a very, very good power position. Um, I could obviously just double into Vileplume on the second turn afterwards if I have to against Pert, just so that when his taunt ends, he's put in a tricky situation potentially against the Plume. Um, but yeah, like, the, the Archieberry is so that... Um, uh, Ice Punch from Gallade and uh, Ice Beam from Greninja don't do too much. I can respond with Thunder Wave against both of them, which would be my initial play against both. Mm. Pardon me, you might be thinking to yourself, Verd, why on earth would you go for Thunder Wave on Greninja when you could just Volt Switch and kill it? Um, and to that I say... Uh, well, it's, it's twofold, really. First and foremost, I'm fully aware the Volt Switch can kill. The one thing I'm afraid of, for some unknown reason, knowing Sticks is he runs like a fucking Wakanberry. Because that lets him take a hit from Victini too. That's something I'm actually kind of afraid of, is Wakanberry, um, Greninja. And so he stays in turn one against Teeny, knowing he can take the hit. So T-Wave is a potential move. It's definitely there for the Gallade though. Gallade is a monstrous threat against my team. I don't really have like a solid counter to it. So my way of dealing with it is having every mod on my team being able to take a hit and then fucking it up if I need it to. So never letting it be in for free. So that's what Thunder achieves. I guess straight for the Thunder Wave. I don't think you can risk running like a subset in this matchup. Uh, at the same time, like Volt Switch can always just break the subs, even if he subs up and I go for Thunder Wave and it sucks. Then I can just Volt Switch on the next turn as he goes for like an SD or something and I can go out to like my appropriate counter, be it, you know, aggressively into Diancy, uh, into potentially Vile Plume, Selly, like even Teeny if the Sash is still intact, puts an immense amount of pressure on, but if he's sub SD, then he's suffering a lot from full move slot syndrome. So if he's running, say, Ice Punch plus Drain Punch, then Teeny can just come in and take a hit regardless. Um, so yeah, I've got plays around everything there. 
Uh, HP Ice is pretty obvious, it's mainly for the uh, Garchomp, but also you can get good chip on the Pert. Let me scout what kind of set he is. Uh, it's mainly there for the Garchomp, because as you can see, this set is very much currently bait for like a sub SD Chomp. I don't want to allow that to happen. Even if I lose my Thunderous in the process, I always have Diancie that can revenge. So that's really good. My kind of win con too is like Diancie chipping things down. I've definitely got some plans with it, but we're going to move on to the next set here, which is Celesteela. Um, this is designed to basically be the Greninja check, or closest to Greninja check. Um, it's the best I got, and th this set was really tricky to design because, I mean, Leech Seed's great in this matchup. It's super, super good because he doesn't have a Grass type, so I'm leeching everything, which is awesome. Um, it doesn't do a lot to Metagross, realistically, but, like, Leech Seed plus that Air Slash Chip is really good for the Diancie because... If Metagross goes down, then Diancie just has a really strong matchup, just on its own. Like, without setting up or anything, it's just really hard for him to deal with. Metagross is by far his best counter to Diancie in this matchup. So if Selly can wear that down, it's good too. I'm running Toxic. So this was a tricky one, right? I was tossing up between Toxic and even like something like Earthquake. Um, because of uh, like the toss-up between Zapdos and Metagross. I decided that I would go with Toxic because I felt that... Being able to poison the Zapdos in the long term was much better than being able to uh, like EQ a Metagross. A reason for that is because um, I feel that with um, Zapdos just being such an annoying one, it's it was a really tricky choice. I just felt Toxic was way more spammable too. It like if he predicted like the double leech or whatever, Toxic was just a pretty safe middle ground play. It caught the Zapdos on switch in and was really really handy there. Um, and just allowed extra chip on other mons, uh, especially the Pert. It was really nice for, I felt, like being able to wear that thing down over time if I needed to. It's a move that I'm probably not going to be clicking that often. Like, Leech Seed and Air Slash are by far the two Spamble moves here. Air Slash is so good because obviously just absolutely fists Buzzwall. Um, as well as just getting good chip against everything. Um, Garchomp's going to need a lot of bulk to ensure that it can take an Air Slash, and potentially he will over-prep for like a heavy slam well if he knows that heavy slam can always break his sub then maybe he will you know try and not worry about the sub variant but again like i said even if he is a sub variant then i can try and make plays around that sub variant can definitely though potentially set up on selly so i need to be careful about that air slash has a chance to break subs as far as i remember uh, let me type in my celestealer set again against garchomp so let's say it's an offensive chomp so, uh, the Selly set that I had was Air Slash. So Air Slash does 27.7 to 33.1. So he would need to have, like, a lot of investment to even have it close to not breaking his sub. Something I feel like he can't afford to do. So Air Slash is pretty much guaranteed to break the sub. Anyway, moving on to the, <laughs> as I said, with very inverted commas, the Metagross and Galay check. It's more of a lure than anything else. Uh, so the reason why I feel like this Vile Plume set is going to be really, really strong is, again, um, the kind of move set that it's running. So, with the Stun Spore, it's fantastic against the Metagross and the Gallade. So basically the way that I see this game going is, realistically, all I gotta do is weaken either one of Gallade or Metagross, and it opens the door for Zygarde or Diancie, in that regard. Um, if I Stun Spore a Gallade by taking the hit with Piapa Berry, then I can guarantee just start firing off Strength Saps. I've got enough speed on my Vile Plume to creep um, Mons like Muck, uh, Pert, some other things, but also I believe, I actually didn't check this, I don't think, which is something I really should have checked, and I may have to get my phone out for this, because, <laughs> well no, it's going to halve its speed. So Gallade at level 50, with half speed, I think, will actually still have to be my Vile Plume. <laughs> I, I don't think I actually calced the speed correctly for it. Gallade with half of its speed is 89, which will still have to be my Vile Plume, so I kind of messed up there. It makes Dunspore a little bit less viable but also it in a other way it makes it so good still because although it means that my vile plume maybe can't deal with Gallade as much um it still will weaken the Gallade to the point now where i don't have to worry about 50 50s with diancie i can freely vault switch on it with thundy um victini can just click be create for free zygar can just come in and do the damn thing uh it does have enough speed to creep metagross though which is cool because i am packing the hp ground the main reason for that is because I feel like he's going to bring a Sugarberry Metagross to this matchup, as um, as potentially Bullet Punch doesn't knock out Diamond Storm boosted Diancie. I feel like he may run the Sugarberry to ensure that he can 1v1 Diancie in that situation. It also just is a really good bait against the Zygarde, and also against Seismitoad. 
I think he'll run Grass Knot for Seismitoad. I'm expecting some kind of set like that, but um, Hitting My Ground is great for that. Moonblast, funnily enough, is the best coverage move uh, my Vileplume has against his entire team. It's wicked. Strength Sap is actually so good, so in case you've never seen this move before, it lowers the attack stat of a Pokemon, and then you get your health healed by the target's attack stat. So Gallade has like base, what is it, 165, so I'm going to get all my health back. Metagross is the same, although Metagross has clear body, so I don't know how it's going to work. See, the initial thing says, user kills HP's target attack stat, so I'm thinking it could also work against Metagross, it just gives me a heal back, it doesn't actually lower his attack because of clear body. But in that case, I'll probably just run HP ground there. Sunspore super good, it could miss, but you know, we risk it for the biscuit. Uh, we got Sunspore cucked in week two, so I'm hoping not to really cuck him with the hacks, but more it's to set up other mons on my team for the win. Speaking of those other mons, here is Diancy. Um, so I actually didn't need that much special attack investment in this matchup because uh, most of the time I'm free to click Moonblast. If Metagross comes in, it's taking hopefully um, some good damage over time would be great. I have rocks on this set because of the fact that if Diancy comes in against things um, like Garchomp, I... it's tricky, right? So the, the Diancy set has a few different uh, kicks to it. It has rocks because I feel there will be some situations, like against Zapdos, where he's forced to swap out. Um, and so then rocks are pretty free, because if Gross comes in, I could either just stay in, like a man and earth power, or I can just double out into like Victini most likely against it, and be in a pretty good spot um, against most Metagross sets uh, in that scenario. But rocks could be really handy with Nancy, but at the same time I don't really need them. There's a lot of situations where I can just freely click Moonblast in this matchup. Um, earth power is mainly there to punish the muck as well as the Metagross on swap in. I have to be really careful with Metagross plays because if my um, Vileplume can pop that, um, that Shooker, then it puts him in a really tricky position, I think. But the Earth Power kind of counters the Shooker set if it needs me, which means it opens a door for Zygarde. And the Hidden Power Grass, uh, like I said, is the groundwork from Victini early game to pop that Rindo Berry. Hidden Power Grass then ensures that Swampert dies. So you're probably wondering about the investment in HP. That investment ensures that Gallade cannot knock me out with any move, barring, pardon me, Iron Tail. Uh, Leaf Blade doesn't knock me out. Close Combat doesn't knock me out, and Moonblast pretty much murders him. It also ensures that I live an Earthquake from a Swampert, which means in some situations I could potentially go for Stealth Rock against the Pert um, as it tries to attack me, and then follow up with a Hidden Power Grass if, for some reason, getting up rocks on that turn is important, like, say, if there's a Scarf Buzzwall in the back, and I know that if I kill the Pert, then Swamp uh, Buzzwall comes in and I can't afford to swap out, then in the long term that's a better play for me. Um, so yeah. Rocks are there because there are opportunities like against Zapdos where rocks can be pretty good, but at the same time, Moonblast spam is the important thing. I need to scout that um, Metagross set as early as possible and play around it. But finally, the last set and the main, I guess, win con of the team is Zygarde. Realistically, this thing can set up on <coughs> the majority of Six's team. Late game DD can potentially just clean sweep um, his roster. Zygarde does not need to touch the field until I feel it is necessary for it to come in and end the game. So this is why I said I can play a little bit more liberally with Diancy, like if I want to go for rocks against the Pert, because if I go for rocks against the Pert and then proceed to go for like a Moonblast or Hidden Power Grass and knock out the Pert and then Buzzwall comes in and it's scarfed, Buzzwall might go for, uh, I don't know, some move, but it could allow my Zygarde to come in for free. If it locks itself an Ice Punch, I got mons around that. Um, and whatnot, but Zygarde is basically designed as a scenario where I can just sack off a Mon and then he can just come in, click DD. With the Yachi Berry, it ensures that it can set up on Zapdos, um, Swampert, Greninja, uh, Gallade, what else have we got? Doesn't set up freely against Garchomp, unfortunately. There is one other Mon that I am actually forgetting that I know for a fact Zygarde's designed to set up in the face of. Um, and it escapes me. I'm running Outrage for the fact that I don't recall Styx having a Fairy type. No, he has regular Diancy. So he does. But the reason I'm rocking Outrage is because regular Diancy could be a bring for him. It's definitely something I'm a little bit concerned about with the lead Victini because two energy balls against a Spadef Diancy is a problem. Which is why, like I said, if Diancy's there, I'm also inclined to lead with my. Uh, Thundee because I can taunt the Diancy 
proceed to then go for a vault switch out to either my Cellar Stealer or my own Diancy and go from there. Um, they're kind of the options that I'm looking at. But uh, that, is, that was the other reason I forgot about, is to why I lead Sunday. Um, but yeah, basically I feel like I can wear down his Diancy enough to where I can kill it. And then once it goes down and Metagross goes down, then Outrage Spam just goes in. Um, granted, you got to watch out for Ninja with that Water Shuriken, but E-Speed is there to kind of cover that too. I really wanted to run Dragonium here because it's just so good and breaks so many things, but realistically Yachi is the most optimal item as it does allow me to set up on the most things and put in the most work. Enough speed to creep Buzzwall and then a shit ton of bulk to ensure that I can live even crits from Ice-type moves and set up when I need to to achieve a victory in the game. So yeah. That's pretty much the team. A uh, very long explanation, I know, but I really put a lot of thought into this team, and I'm kind of getting back into the process now of really thinking through my teams and how I want them to be run. But I definitely am confident that I can pull out the victory here. Like I said, if I see, um, if I don't see Garchomp, then there's a good chance I'll lead with Thundee. Um, but if I do see Garchomp, it's, it's okay. This is the tricky part. Okay, I mean, this is the bit that makes it really really difficult is if he brings both Garchomp and Diancy. Because in that scenario I really have to make a decision on do I want to leave Thundee and put myself in a position where um, lead Rocks Chomp gets him up for free and that sucks for my Victini set unless I go hard into it but then if he just drops like a Stone Edge that also sucks for it. Um, or do I lead Victini against that, and then he leads with his Diancy and gets the rocks up. But that's the thing with the Victini set, is that because I have the Sash, even if he makes that play, I can just Energy Ball turn 1, get off a good chunk of damage, and then kind of go from there. That's the big plus, I guess, of this Victini set. Um, but even if he does get up rocks turn 1, which would suck because it means my Diancy might not be able to live as many hits, um, it's just one of those bullets that I have to kind of bite. And move on from. Realistically, the other play I could make as a middle ground is leading Thundee, and then if he leads Garchomp, I just go hard into Diancy, and that puts immediate pressure. I have to be careful with Diancy because there is a chance he is Roselli Chomp. So, yeah. <coughs> There's a lot of variables, but I definitely feel like Lead Teeny is going to be the way to go. We will see what happens, though. Obviously, Sticks can bring a myriad of different options, and I just got to play accordingly around all of them. But, that is going to do it for this team builder, a nice almost 30 minute long one. If you did enjoy this, make sure you like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll be having the game later on tonight, which you will see a face cam for. I've made a lot more room on my Camtasia now. I, when I was recording my game against Carney, I didn't have enough room to finish recording the live comp, which sucked. Uh, but it is what it is. I'm feeling like this team could work. We're going to see what happens. But yeah, this is a bird. I'm out of this bitch.